Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there, feeling well. I mean, it is Friday, so I would think that most of us are doing pretty well out there. If you're not, hope your day certainly gets better. Got you a big update this morning on what's going to happen weather-wise for today. Expecting another day of severe weather. I think today, the biggest threat today, and it could increase. Remember, usually one or two, three hours after I drop this video, the, uh, another update comes out from the Storm Prediction Center, and they sometimes upgrade the risk that did not happen yesterday but as of now we do have an enhanced risk and it's really hell driven we could have some big time hell storms today and we'll give you an update on that break it down pretty well and uh, talk about the rest of the country too and try to figure it out so uh, appreciate you guys understanding about not dropping a video last night just been trying to work with some things with uh, the storm chasing trying to figure out what I want to do um, you know I've been really nagged about it in my head it's been not flooding my thoughts, but I've been really goal oriented on, you know, doing some changes with this channel. And I feel like, I feel like storm chasing and live streaming would do well with this channel with a tight knit family that we have here. And before I really drop it, you know, I, I really want to make sure it's right for you guys. And at least you know, a consistent, nice feed for you folks. So I've just been working behind the scenes to try to fix some things could take a, another several days. It could take a few more weeks, but the plan is to have it ready for hurricane season. So with that being said, if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put it in the comments below so I can do that and so others can do so too. So take a look at Water Vapor Loop. I mean, you can see the spin out here it's it's pretty obvious there's a surface slow right here you have ongoing storms from the leftover energy that did unfortunately spark some tornadoes in oklahoma i think cole oklahoma had a tornado right when the sun was going down it was uh, kind of from all the videos i saw you know you know me guys i go to bed pretty early all the videos i saw when i woke up this morning it looked like it was nighttime outside so hopefully there's no big time damage that we're waking up to this morning i hope you guys are faring well there in central oklahoma but the leftover energy from that area of storms has moved into Missouri. We kind of thought that was going to happen, and it's just hanging strong in Missouri. But we'll watch the reinitiation of more storms right into this region today, and these will be where they could be the most intense surface low right here. You can see the spin ongoing in this region, a lot of convection down here, and you actually have a little leftover outflow boundary that continues to be driven off that and has been surging through Georgia. The HRRR model is not handling that well. The NAM is, but this is the same energy that sparked uh, several tornado warnings throughout Louisiana, uh, Mississippi yesterday. So, you know, this is kind of what's going on as of right now. And we are definitely with this very slow moving upper level low going to uh, with the in surface slow response of it going to get some powerful storms today in areas of the Midwest. We got flood watches still up. We could, you know, not to ignore this too, and we're going to talk about this, but a pretty massive area of storms could uh, really develop throughout the afternoon, really explode within about a one or three hour, one to three hour period here in Southwest Texas and really drop a lot of rain. That's why you got fl flood watches uh, in this region. Make sure we got this right. Yeah, flood watches down here. So we're going to run the risk of several inches of rain over the next few days down here in Texas. You guys have already seen a good bit of rain. You're definitely making up for any drought conditions you had. Uh, I think last year, wasn't it? You, you folks in Texas can can voice for this. I think y'all, some areas in Texas went almost the entire summer without any measurable rain. It was quite ridiculous. So... Hopefully we don't have any kind of stretches like that again, but enhanced risk for this portion of the country. And we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit more zoomed in on this here in a second, but the orange area, that's a level three out of five. The yellow area, a level two out of five. That's a slight risk, huge slight risk down here. And I won't be surprised if we get an enhanced risk down here for large hail. I think we could have some big storms that develop right here in Northern Mexico. And I think by the time they make it to the Texas border, I think they will kind of evolve into a massive, Mesoscale Convective System, MCS for short, and we'll watch this. But we could have some strong storms over here today also. I, I think that we could get some thunderstorms uh, throughout the southeast today for sure. And we'll zone in on this that here in a second. Moderate risk of flash flood guidance being met over the next 24 hours down here in southwest Texas and southern Texas, the hills of Texas. 
And I, I definitely think we're going to have some flooding risk down here. There's a slight risk up here too. That's a 15, at least a 15% risk of flashlight guidance being met. But you notice there's a huge marginal risk. And that just indicates that we're going to have a lot of thunderstorm development just in general today. Storm Prediction Center, as far as a more zoomed in look at what's going on. And guys, I just, you know, going to pull it up on the fly again. You know how I am. I, sometimes I'm just, um, I'm just not very prepared to get going here but i definitely want to try to shout out some towns and cities and things like that but one thing we do know is that we will have some strong storm potential from kansas city all the way up through omaha places like that and you know lincoln uh topeka st joseph uh, all the way up to sioux city you know sioux falls could see some nasty weather too so i'll try to i try to mention numerous towns and communities throughout this video just to try to keep you guys aware and if i butcher any names you know how it goes you guys let me know and i will certainly try to do my best uh to uh correct it the next time i mention um a butchered name or two out here but enhance risk up in the orange area it's a level three out of five for severe weather to tornado risk this really isn't tornado driven guys uh but you do have you do have a 5% risk in the brown area within a tornado, a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location. Just a reminder, on the next update, this could upgrade. You might get a 10% risk, but as of now, as of now, as of 6, basically 6.30 a.m. Eastern time, it's just a 5% risk. But the hell threat is really the big threat with this. You have not only a 30% risk to see hail in excess of one inch, in diameter or larger, you also have a 10% risk of significant hail, which as you guys know, most of you folks know, that is hail in excess of two inch in diameter or larger. It's very large hail. That's hail that will put, that could potentially crack your windshield, especially when you get over to that three inch range, that golf ball to baseball size hail, that's when it starts to, to really do some damage hail wise. So uh, please be aware of this. Please have a way to get alerts and just be aware of some 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 big time hailstorms in this region today. Damaging winds, there is a threat of this. There's a 15% risk of winds pushing 50 knots or higher in this region. So we'll certainly watch out for that, but I would say the damaging wind threat isn't that high with this, but it's there. It's there just just like with any severe storm, you can always have severe winds with these storms. Um Looking at the radar, let's talk about let's talk about Nebraska first. So we have some ongoing rain already going, and especially in the western half of the state of Nebraska. We'll take it out throughout the morning hours. If you're confused about the time frame we're at at any point, this is 12 p.m. So this will be 11 a.m. Central Time out here. A sector kind of opens up right in here, and this is when we can get some powerful storms to begin to develop right here in Central Nebraska. Watch out, North Platte. Uh, but I would say Broken Bow, you know, Ord, you guys could see some powerful storms early in the afternoon, 1, 2, 3 p.m. And then I would say that you get this kind of bowing out line that develops. And this is when you could have a tornado threat early in the storm mode, I would say. Norfolk, um, Nebraska, you guys, storms could push through around 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, Columbus, Nebraska, Wayne, Nebraska, West Point, Fremont. Big storms, and then I would say, and remember, the models aren't always going to be perfect, but they're guidance, so this is all we got to look at at this point. We get into the 5 to 6 p.m. time frame. I say these storms start to knock on the door of Omaha. Watch out for a powerful storm or two, and then these storms begin to move kind of more so in northern areas and northeast sections of Nebraska. So I would watch out Yankton, you know, starting to get into South Dakota, Basically, anybody in this tucked in area of Southeast Dakota, any towns, communities in this region, I would say late afternoon, evening time, watch out for some big time storms. Could have produced very large hail, uh, heavy rain, obviously, with any storm. And, you know, a quick spin up cannot be ruled out, but I would say very large hail is the biggest threat with this. And then this moves over. Uh, moves through immense and by the time we get into the overnight hours i would say the severe weather threat diminishes but you could still have some ongoing showers and storms throughout the wee hours of the morning and morning time for your saturday morning here in southeast south dakota for sure you move over into iowa and let me get my old google maps ready for you folks and we get into iowa and, and i would say the eastern and i'm sorry the western and southwestern portions of iowa stand the best chance to to see the worst weather in this region. And like I said, you know, the H-Triple-R model did not perform that well in last night's event. 
We had some powerful storms in North Texas that did not show up from the HRRR model. That's why it's always just, you know, just always remember this is just guidance. But big storms showing up here from the HRRR model. You know, obviously this area is favored, so that's why you're seeing more storms fire up from this from the model in general. But you know, watch out here in far southwest areas of Iowa. You guys could certainly be under the gun. Red Oak, watch out, Atlantic. Um, these storms, these areas could get some powerful storms. 7 to 8 p.m., these storms begin to move more so out of Nebraska into western Iowa. If I say eastern Iowa at any point, I do apologize. It's not what I mean. I get my uh, directions mixed up sometimes. Not intentionally, just so much information flood into my head at one time. But basically, I would say if you're anybody in western Iowa, some storms could move through late afternoon. I would say more so the evening time frame, anywhere from 7 through 10 p.m., but these storms are still ongoing even after 10 p.m. You know, this, speaking of 10 p.m., you got some powerful storms riding the Missouri and Iowa state line down here. These storms could be powerful up here. They could be the worst down here in northern Missouri. But, you know, this is midnight at this point, and we have some big storms in and around the Des Moines area, Ames area, points south moving through. And I think this loses some steam as you work your way into later into the overnight hours but the tornado risk you know you can look at the significant tornado parameter from this and it's not super high today but i would say it could spike sometime this this evening and basically this entire region right in here basically we're in nebraska uh, northwest northwest missouri and southwest iowa connect you know you got stb stp readings significant tornado parameter readings well over the five six range which anything over one is you know conditions that are favorable for tornadic activity and it really spikes here around 8 9 p.m here on the missouri iowa border so you know please be aware the tornado threat is definitely not existent today but i would say the threat of large hail is higher than the tornado threat which a lot of times with severe weather events it is. You know, you, you dig a little bit deeper into Missouri in general, the severe weather threat, I would say, decreases as you get further south of Missouri. But as you get into this afternoon, some storms could get going here, and you can't rule out a severe storm or two in the southwest Illinois area or really anywhere in Missouri. As we get into 3, 4, 5 o'clock this afternoon, I would watch out. I would say any given location in Illinois could have a strong to severe storm today, so please be aware of that. But then as we move into the late night hours, 10, 11 p.m., you know, watch out for some strong storms, even in southwest Missouri. You know, overnight tonight, you could get a strong storm or two in the Springfield, Missouri area, surrounding areas, and we'll see how these storms evolve. And then we could be waking up with some, you know, ongoing storms in and around the St. Louis area maybe south, maybe north. It just depends on how these storms evolve overnight. The rest of the north central U.S., outside of the severe weather areas, like I said, some strong storms could be ongoing in northern Illinois, really anywhere in Illinois, and just more showers and storms in western Dakota, in the western Dakotas. You guys could pick up another maybe inch or two of rain in this region, and the rain just continues with just the slow motion of this low pressure. The slower it is, the more it's going to rain in the same areas, but Talking about the rest of Wisconsin, Minnesota, you know, some showers and storms are possible in areas of western, especially southwestern Minnesota, all of the Dakotas, maybe an area of showers into the, and this is this is getting into the four or five o'clock in the morning time frame tomorrow morning. Could be waking up to some damp conditions in areas of the Ohio Valley and southern Michigan as you wake up for your Saturday morning. The south central U.S., strong storms are possible in this region. Um, you know, I would say it's quiet for the most part, right? you know, outside of a couple isolated storm or two here in eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas. It's quiet for the most part, and then bang, big, big storms fire up down here. Central Texas, the southwest Texas, southern Texas, you guys could get some powerful storms that really get going down here and really developing just to cluster up into a big line of storms basically move northeast through Texas into the overnight hours, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. These storms are going to probably continue to be outflow boundary driven, meaning they will continue to kind of feed off an area of rain cooled air that is just sweeping out ahead of the storms. And, you know, you go into Texas, 
look at what's going on a little bit zoned in look and just look at these big storms of fire up down here in mexico and then the same energy sweeps out of northern mexico into areas of texas this is around 8 p.m tonight could have some big storms around the midland area it could be up here to lubbock uh, Abilene, you know, Weatherford, these storms could be quite powerful. You're lacking kinematics, which is the wind energy a lot for a tornado threat, but you can't rule it out. But I would say large hail with a lot of convective fuel in the atmosphere will be the biggest threat down here, along with flash flooding. This could be a powerful storm that moves its way out of Mexico into the hills and southwest uh, Texas. A lot of rain. This is around 11, 10 p.m. This is around where all the storms could be later this evening here in texas so please be aware of this no doubt you're going to see these storms coming as they continue to work their way eastward or northeastward and throughout texas you'll see these storms coming you'll hear it coming they might wake you up in the middle of the night here in central texas so please be aware of a lot of storm activity i mean this is around 5 6 a.m tomorrow morning it's storming like crazy down in southern texas these storms can be quite powerful rainfall between now and sunday evening Storm Prediction Center is going for over a half a foot of rain down here in southwest Texas, the hills of Texas. But widespread one to four inch rainfall totals, basically from the Panhandle of Texas through the heart of Texas to the southern portion of the state, even into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. A lot of rains expected, uh, not possible, but expected. Um, the rest of the southeast today, you could have some storm activity move into central and western Tennessee especially just after lunchtime today you can see it right here all this storm activity could move through i would say the severity level of this will be low but you know just like you saw in louisiana and mississippi yesterday you can't rule out severe weather and especially as you start to get into a summer type pattern you can't rule it out at all and you know you look at this around 4 or 5 p.m this afternoon storms ongoing the cumberland plateau up into you know areas of kentucky the mountains of north carolina in Tennessee, widespread, I would say more isolated storms are possible in Georgia. And then we'll watch to see if any energy fires up in the Carolinas as you get later in the afternoon and evening. You got widespread storms now in southern Georgia, panhandle of Florida, big bend areas of Florida. Some storms are possible really anywhere. It's going to be it's just getting that time of the year where it's impossible to figure out where a storm is going to pop up. But, you know, latest AAAR model showing a more organized area of storms possible in southeast Georgia. A little bit later this evening and then with the loss of daytime heating and the ingredients for storms um you know it calms back down you look at the northeast today ongoing showers pivoting through vermont new hampshire uh the reinitiation of some showers maybe even a storm up here in maine and i could i could tell you you could have some hail possible with some of these heavier showers and thunder showers up here in maine throughout the afternoon and late evening and then we'll watch an area of storms that begin to develop and make their way from the southwest northeastward into Ohio throughout the afternoon and evening hours. But I wouldn't worry for you folks in Ohio and this entire mid-Atlantic region right in here, Ohio Valley region, West Virginia, you know, eastern Kentucky, Ohio. Showers and storms are possible really anywhere. But, you know, the severity level of them, it, it won't be a big deal. But you can't rule it out. You can't rule it out. Looking at the temperatures very warm we're getting into summer now so i mean 80s all the way up into michigan you know if you're cooler today especially in the mid-south you know it's just because of cloud cover and rain if you didn't have cloud cover and rain it would soar into the 80s could hit a 90 degree reading in areas of virginia today and the eastern carolinas certainly in, in southern georgia be very warm in florida today 80s and 90s and uh you know widespread low to mid 90s in texas today especially this portion of texas right here in um, northern texas western areas of the state so that's all i got sorry for the sloppy delivery right there at the beginning had to start over the video in fact right in the middle of the video i realized on the one of my other videos that i said st louis instead of uh, kansas city that's why there's probably a pause right there while i was talking about st louis and kansas city and towards the beginning of the video so mixed up my cities there and I, and I thought about it right in the middle of the video. I was like, oh, oh man, I messed it up. But anyways, stay safe out there. God bless all y'all. And I'll have you an update this evening.